over the past two days, my portfolio has dropped over $1,000 in market gains, $1,000 of those nice price appreciations wiped out, gone in the past 48 hours. The new coronavirus fears that have really been dampering the market have absolutely impacted my portfolio. Over the past two days, I've seen over a 4% drop in price appreciation. As you can see here, all the major indexes are down. The Toronto Stock Exchange today is down over 2%. The S&P 500 is down close to 3%. Same with the Dow, another 800 point drop or close to 3% drop on the day. So over the past two market days, we've seen a drop of between 6 and 7% in the overall market which to me is actually a little bit of a significant dip. We're not, we're not in a recession just yet. We haven't seen two consecutive quarters of GDP decline. We haven't hit that 10, 15% decline in market values. But this is just a small blip where market noise is actually controlling market performance. And my portfolio has been hit by that hard. As you see here, the market is still open. It's 3.30 p.m. And my portfolio sits at $35,740 with a total loss on the day of over $600 at right now at $602. So for me, like I've said in many videos, but I'm not going to focus on too much on it too much today is that I don't really focus on these short term losses because they're just paper losses. I have no intention on selling these stocks. I'm just going to continue to hold them for the long term. But I wanted to make this video today to really point out about how market noise really has a strong impact on market performance. And you don't want to get freaked out by it when, if nothing in your holdings changes, if your actual companies don't change their fundamentals, if nothing crazy happens within your actual company in itself. Don't let these market conditions drive your investing performance. Don't let it drive what you're going to do. Don't change your investing strategies just because of the short-term dips in the market here. I think most people should look at these as buying opportunities and allow themselves to buy solid companies with great financials that they really believe are going to grow and their price stock of the price of the shares is going to grow over the long term. So as you see here, an article from CNBC, one of my favorite sources for stock market news, says the stock market is plunging for a second down day, with the Dow Jones now down nearly 800 points on Tuesday. And as you can see, the Dow Jones is down almost 900 points on the day. It's down 878 points, which again is another significant drop. And the reason for this video today, I know I made a video yesterday talking about my drop in the market, but that was only about a $400 drop on the day. A reason I'm recording this today is that I want to document my worst performing day in the market, which is today by far. I've been investing for about four months now, and I've only seen increases in price appreciation. I haven't gone through any big recessions yet. It's only been four months, and we have been in a bull market for the last 10 years. So I jumped in right at the end of a bull market. So I know a recession will be coming eventually. Who knows when it's going to come? But I really want to document and share my first experiences with significant drops in my stocks. Of course, this isn't that 20% drop, 30, 40% drops that may be coming in the near future. But for me, this is the first time I've seen my stock prices absolutely drop a significant percent, one to 4% per stock over the past two days. And I've seen my total gains on this portfolio wiped in half in a matter of hours. Before this drop at market close last Friday, my portfolio had a total gain of over $2,100 and I was up over six and a half percent on this portfolio with, with regard to market gains and price appreciation. But since this Kenora virus opening on Monday morning of February 24th, the market has gone down, driving down my portfolio and has caused me to lose half of my price appreciation gains. Of course, I'm still collecting my dividends. And for those who follow me throughout my videos and are subscribed to my channel, they know that I am a dividend growth investor. So my dividends are keep coming in, but I've really already lost half of my price appreciation. And one thing I really want to point out with my holdings is, my portfolio, because of the market and how the market was performing so far when I was building this, and as I continue to build it, I took more of a 
somewhat defensive stance with this portfolio. I have no super speculative tech stocks or IPOs in this portfolio as of right now. These are all so, these are all full of blue chip companies with a long history of strong financials, growing revenue, growing profit and net income each year. And those are the ones I began to fill up my portfolio with and I've built up to this over $35,000 mark. For me, when I was just starting out, I didn't want to go anything too risky. I didn't want to go into anything I didn't understand. For all these companies, I have a strong understanding of what they do to generate revenue. Do I know everything about their day-in, day-out business operations? No, but I do have a fundamental understanding of how the business that conducts its operations and how they make money. So for me, I feel comfortable holding these more defensive stocks. As you can see, I got a portfolio full of banks, the Royal Bank of Canada, Toronto Dominion Bank, Bank of Montreal, who of course will have been hit by this little blip in the market. But these are also strong defensive companies who have a low payout ratio, sustainable and growing revenues with strong growing net income. So for me, I'm okay holding these companies through the little blips. As well as I've added recently this Vanguard REIT ETF to get exposure to the real estate sector of the portfolio of to build a real estate sector in this portfolio. And as people know, REITs somewhat perform differently to equities. Even though REITs trade on the stock market, they usually have a somewhat opposite performance or they don't aren't impacted as much from price changes and fluctuations in the market as normal equities do. So for example, my REIT ETF, if I just scroll over here, I am down 2.5% on this REIT ETF. As of three days ago, I was neutral on it. I had barely any price appreciation. It was kind of safe. Nothing too crazy. If you look down to my two banks here over the same period, I'm down 5% or 4.5% and over 4% on BMO. These two banks have been hit harder from this coronavirus talk and the changes in market fluctuations than my re ETF has. So for me, that's why I kind of put in little, I try to diversify into different sectors so that I have some sectors that perform well in declining markets compared to others. Another thing I would like to point out is how my utility companies, Emra, Fortis, they have actually performed well during this little blip. They've actually not decreased to, at the same rate as all the other companies. Same with my Algonquin Power and Utilities, another utility company where these defensive companies that pay around a 4 to 5% dividend, because they're more in a defensive sector with that consistent cash flow, they're not impacted as much from price movements from this Kenora virus scare. So for me, that's what I tried to build this portfolio of, and I've just been lucky how, as for this little dip, I wasn't impacted as hard as the overall market. And one thing too is because I built a little bit of a defensive portfolio to start out, I always like to compare to how my portfolio is performing compared to the overall market to see if I'm more volatile or less volatile than to the overall S&P TSX which is the Toronto Stock Exchange, which is what majority of my holdings are from as of right now. I will diversify into American and international markets coming up in the future, but as of right now, my portfolio is solidly held in Canada. That's where I'm from. I'm born and raised in Toronto. So for me, that's where my portfolio is held. I have the best tax benefits for holding Canadian equities. And of course, because of where Canada and US are such strong um, trading partners, there are some tax benefits, which I'll go on in detail in a future video. But for right now, I hold Canadian companies that trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So my portfolio, the dip today of 1.77%, is not as severe as you can see here of the entire Toronto Stock Exchange that has dropped 2.15%. So about a half a percent difference between how my portfolio performs and the S&P TSX performed on the same down day, which makes me feel a little bit better that I'm not as volatile as the overall market and that my I have some defensive companies that are holding their own and are staying strong throughout this little short-term dip in markets. So for me, it makes me feel well enough that I'm going to keep collecting my dividends, hold these strong financially sound companies that have strong balance sheets and have strong income statements. And for me, I'm just going to watch this portfolio drop, buy more, use it as a buying opportunity to add to my current positions, maybe start new positions in companies that may be now undervalued because they've been dipped 7%. Not going to worry about it. As you can see, as of the filming of this video, my total gain has now dipped below $1,000. So I've actually seen more than half, maybe 50 to 55% of the total gain on this portfolio wiped away within two days 
from this little dip in the, from based on the coronavirus. So for me, I'm not too stressed out about it. I'm going to continue to hold. I just want to make this update to show and document my worst performing day in the stock market just to have as for future reference so I can always come back and see what has happened on this day and the moves I made to keep holding and not selling off in panic because of this day will actually help me over the long term. So thank you for watching. Thank you for following along on this update. I really like to document all the major changes in my portfolio and share them with everyone just so I have my own personal reference and hopefully everyone else can learn and maybe get some value out of this. So as always, I'm the Gen Z investor. If you enjoy this and you enjoy my channel and all these videos, please like and subscribe. I post videos twice a week, every Monday and Thursday with the occasional video in between if there's something I'd like to talk about. So thank you for watching. See you next time.